In this Copilot Unplugged video, I want to talk about measure descriptions, why they're important for people, why they're important for Copilot, and how you can generate them in Power BI using Copilot. So let's take a look. We have here a report and a pretty simple model. Measure descriptions, as the name suggests, are descriptions for your measures. They appear when you hover on the field and they provide you information about what that measure is, what it should be used for, this kind of thing. So it's useful for documentation purposes, but it's also informative for users who are going to use that model to make their own stuff. Or if multiple developers are working on the same model and they need to be sure, you know, what is this field, how should it be used, and so on and so forth. But measure descriptions and descriptions of other fields, because you can also have descriptions for tables, for columns, for example. You can see these descriptions actually if you go in the model view here. Or if you're using an external tool, of course, like Tabular Editor, you can also see it in the properties. But you can select a object, a table, a column, a measure, and then you can enter a description for it. So like I said, this is useful for documentation purposes, for informing people, but it's also useful for informing Copilot because this information, synonyms as well as descriptions, are extremely important to inform Copilot about how it should use that field and what the purpose of that field is, particularly when there is ambiguity. Like, for instance, we have document type in our model in multiple different places. We have invoice document type and order document type, and these are very similar in their structure. So descriptions here and synonyms are going to be very important for Copilot to be able to choose whether to use one or another. For example, when we're asking it to filter to express orders, for example. Now, how do you make descriptions? Of course, you could write them manually. This takes a lot of time. And this is the only way to do it in Power BI if you're using tables and columns. But if you're using measures, so if we go back to this OTD example, if we have a measure, you can select this button here, create with Copilot. And Copilot is going to generate a measure description, suggest it for you based off of the DAX code and some other information. So for example, here it's suggesting, calculates the percentage of on-time delivery based on the total net invoice value, right? So we can discard that if we don't want to keep it. We can look at another example, OTD quantity, create with Copilot, and it's going to give some suggestions. So this doesn't mean that these suggestions are going to be perfect or even useful. They might even have some bugs. For example, here it says where the invoice document type group is string literal rather than referring to the invoice document type group. Now, it's important to assess, are these descriptions going to be the best option for you, your users, and for Copilot? I would actually argue, no, they're not. Because, for example, the suggestion from Copilot here is saying that the OTD indicator is true. But this really wouldn't be very useful for a user. OTD indicator means nothing. Ideally, your description should be something in business semantics, in business language. But of course, the reason why it's saying that is because that is what is happening in the DAX code. Let's look at another example. Let's look at, for example, our forecast month to date. Now, the forecast month to date is very complicated because, you know, there's a lot going on in this particular measure. But let's go ahead and create a description with Copilot of the forecast. It gives a very brief suggestion, calculates the forecasted value for the current month to date based on the selected period and the workday's percentage. Now, if I was a user, I would find this incredibly not useful because it doesn't tell me what the forecast is for. Is it for sales? Is it for orders? It doesn't tell me that the forecast is monthly. It doesn't tell me that the forecast is at a fixed granularity, whether the forecast is updated like a 1 plus 11 and 2 plus 10 and so on, and whether there's other specific you know, exceptions or updates or logic because Copilot's only really looking at the DAX code and whatever metadata is in that measure. All of these things that we would put in that description, this is business semantics and business logic related to the forecasting process. And that's the information that would be most helpful for a person. Now, for Copilot, maybe it's a little bit different. 
because Copilot maybe needs to know other information about when that field should be used and how it should use it. But for a user, it's very important to relate information not only about the technical facts about this particular object, like that it uses a selected period, for example. So that's important information to know, but they also need to know things about the process. Again, like it's a monthly forecast, like it has a fixed granularity at product type or key customer, these kind of things. This is the kind of stuff that makes your measure descriptions useful. And I think it's part of the reason why generating them with Copilot isn't necessarily going to be the best option if you're gonna have users consuming your model. Does that mean that you shouldn't use it? No, I think it's a really good starting point, but just like generating synonyms, it's more of an iterative thinking exercise than it is a solution. Particularly since you can only generate it for measures and you can only generate it one measure at a time. Now the alternative is that you could use the Tyndall scripting view. So Rui Romano has a video on this on his LinkedIn, for example, where you can take the Tyndall script use it in VS Code and use GitHub Copilot to generate the descriptions for multiple things at once, like columns, tables, measures. And that I think is probably a more efficient way to do this rather than using uh, Copilot in Power BI with this button. I think that this has a very limited utility and I'm not really sure that this is gonna help you be more productive, be more efficient or create a better model if I'm perfectly honest. If you want to leverage AI, I think a much better option is for you to look at the Tyndall scripting view that is in preview and to leverage GitHub Copilot in VS Code to write your Tyndall script. Of course, there's other alternatives as well, like scripts in Tabular Editor or using Semantic Link Labs to generate those descriptions. But again, remember, you need to review them one by one and you need to make sure that they're going to be useful both for people as well as for Copilot and we don't fully understand yet what the best description is going to be for Copilot. So that's all I have to say about measure descriptions. They're quite important. They do take some time. I don't think that AI is something that's going to cut down on that time dramatically. And I think it's a mistake to rely on AI to do the descriptions. However, I think some descriptions could potentially be better than nothing. It just depends on the accuracy and the quality of those descriptions themselves. So always make sure you review them, but I really recommend that you more focus on the business process and the business logic, the business knowledge that you could put in that description to make it more helpful for other people and probably also Copilot. So that's all I have to say.